I've made a whole bunch of different trees using geometry nodes, but honestly, this is the method I'm most proud of. So much so that last night I was just working on this and I'm like, I, I can't fucking wait <laughs> until tomorrow morning when I explain this. Uh, this is a fully procedural tree that grows using kind of systems that are similar to nature. And check this out. Not only does it like blow in the wind if you wanted it to, but fully, fully, fully procedural. So I take basically what I call like the root of this, and this is actually dictating the entire tree. I can literally just shift one thing and that alone changes how the tree grows. I can like rotate it to the side. Let's do something a bit more complicated here. And you can get an arbitrary amount of detail, by the way. Let's go up one more level. Uh, if you're asking yourself how something like this is possible, well, I'm excited to tell you. By the way, in this tutorial, we're going to start with the two-dimensional case of an L system or an L tree, whatever you want to call it. But for the full file, like this monstrosity, you can either get it on Patreon for being a patron, or I'm experimenting on putting like things like this on Blender Market for like a dollar and a half. So basically, like I said, the idea of this is we want to make kind of like a little diagram. So let's say we have a nice forking here. And for every tip of the diagram being this one here and this one here, I just want to paste the same diagram. So this one gets a fork, this one gets a fork, now this one gets a fork, this one gets a fork, and you can see how repeating this over and over again creates really interesting patterns, but but uh, the forking example is normal. There's no reason you can't do something like this, where now this one gets this leaf, this one gets that leaf. You see how I'm just kind of copying the same thing over and over again. So I'm gonna start with the plane, go into edit mode and hit M at center. I can hit E to extrude and now, I can just extrude these two leaves. Only other thing I want to do to set this up before GeoNodes is I want to say, hey, Blender, where should I start like copying these forks over and over and over again? Well, the answer is on this tip and on this tip. Uh, to make it simple, I'm going to make a vertex group. I'm going to call it selection. Select both of these and click assign. We are going to instance on points. We are going to instance the thing itself on itself. Kind of very strange, right? However, uh, you're going to kind of notice that there's still a V down here, whereas we expect there to just be the two nodes that make new instances. This is because we're not saying to only do it on our selection. We can bring that information in. That's why we made it. And there we go. Now we have our first iteration and our second iteration. And in fact, we can actually join them after. No, no phone calls now. And I know this joining looks like the same thing as if I never even included this, but this actually sets us up for the future. But it's not oriented correctly. Like this fork should be pointing in this direction that goes along this uh, branch or fiber, uh, but instead it's like pointing upwards. Let me show you what the result of that is. Just going to make a basic node group over here that we are going to undo in a second anyways, but we can now duplicate this. So this is our next input and we're always going to have the same instance. Let's just do it one more time. This is going to be the input. We view it. This is going to be the branching. It does it over and over and over again till the point where we're basically going to get a pyramid instead of this kind of branching out tree because the rotation isn't correct. So we got to make sure that the rotation works for us, not against us. How do we know the orientation, how much we should rotate the instance by? Well, it's dictated by the direction of this branching. So if we can somehow extract this vector, then we can actually actually look at this angle along the x-axis and call that the rotation. All we need to do is we need to say, take our point and then go one kind of vertex back on the diagram. Issue being, how do we know what like one vertex back is? What we can do is we can split edges and let's kind of get rid of this so it's not as sloppy. Split edges basically gives us the same thing, but now this edge and this edge are separate instead of sharing a vertex. Find the index of nearest. We want to make sure we're not just finding the vertex that that's closest to our tip, but one that is connected by an edge, because what if there was a vertex over here and it was closer? So index of nearest gives us the nearest vertex, but now for this group ID, which basically tells us which kind of vertices are we allowed to look at, now we have the luxury of using a mesh island. What I mean by this is since we've split the edges, this edge and this edge are actually not connected, we're going to take this index and we are going to evaluate at index. We are going to evaluate the position, right? So now we have the position of kind of the root, this one over here, and then we just need to create the vector from one to the other. I'm going to take the original position and subtract the previous one. So the final thing I need to do is turn it into a rotation value. In 3D, this is going to be a bit different, but in two dimensions, let me show you uh, kind of a simple way to do that. I'm going to separate by XYZ, so I have their XYZ components. I then want to kind of extract a uh, angle value, and a great way to do that is using arctan 
and two basically takes two inputs and kind of does a inverse tangent and gives us an angle. Uh, you'll notice that the way we have this oriented at the moment is it's a L diagram on the Z and the X axis, okay? Put in Z here and X here. You can look into Arctan too. This spits out the angle of rotation. I'm going to make this rotation on the Y axis. The reason for that is if I take this and rotate it on the Y axis, we get this a nice rotation, whereas for everything else, we're rotating it kind of in the wrong dimension. This is going to be our rotation. If I make this split edges my points, and in this case, I also make it my instance, I think I actually have these inverted. So now it's X and Z. Let's join these to actually see if this is what we wanted. And there you go. Now you can tell that this is different in the sense that it's rotated in a way that makes more sense. So now the name of the game is basically taking this and finding a way to repeat it over and over and over again, such that it doesn't break, which isn't necessarily as easy as it sounds. So an easy way to think about this, if there is an easy way to think about this, is I want to basically isolate and put into a group every single thing that isn't our original instance. That's why I put this over here, hit control G, make sure you have everything selected. Hopefully now it's looking a tiny bit clearer. Let's reverse those to make it simple. So I'm going to call this previous. The bottom one is going to be instance. And now uh, we are happy. So let's actually test this. And we are actually going to run into an issue. Perhaps we are going to kind of chain it together. So previous goes into previous and then the instance. And this is why I separated it is the same thing every single time we do it like this and it keeps branching beautiful so you might be wondering why is this not like a foolproof method why am I saying there's gonna be an issue well let's just kind of stress test this a bunch so instead of uh, putting all our nodes in a chain let's actually do this manually so I'm gonna use the repeat zone for every repetition we're just going to do our operation where it's the same thing as last time we have our initial condition that is the um, the thing that we modeled that's going into the repeat zone it's going into previous again and again and again and every single time the instance is the same thing as as I increase this, and you're going to see it's going to work. As I increase this, you're going to see all of a sudden it stops doing anything, right? At around instance six. And the reason for that is every time we're adding instances and instances go inside of instances. So you have these nested things and it turns out it only goes uh, six levels deep. And if I kind of keep increasing this, you're going to see that it is increasing over here, but it doesn't draw. So just kind of like as a rule of thumb, um, it only does six levels of nested instances. So what we need to do is instead of instancing every single time, we got to make sure that we are realizing our stuff every single time. I'm going to realize instances and visually this kind of fixes the problem, right? So we just went past six. However, there is something kind of sneaky going on that we do want to repair because we've realized the instances. There's now kind of this hidden behavior where let's say we have a node over here that spawned a fork that spawned more forks. What we expect is for every iteration, it's only basically going to do these uh, tips here. There's no reason to reuse this one uh, back here. That's from a previous iteration. However, it's doing it on every single one, which we don't see because they perfectly overlap. So we're getting a bunch of extra uh, geometry. Kind of the issue with realize instances is now some of these are going to have the selection attribute set to one. So if I look at the selection over here, there's a bunch of ones, a bunch of ones. Whereas if I never uh, realized it, uh, we only have two, which correspond to this one and this one. Luckily, this is super easy to fix. I'm going to store named attribute. And the idea is in this node, I'm going to overwrite this uh, selection over here. First of all, we instance on points and that's relative to the selection. But then afterwards, we need to say we've used these up. There's no reason uh, to keep using these. So it's actually, in fact, for this exact selection, for the ones that spawned something before that we are going to overwrite the selection to zero. And you're going to see the moment we do that. So let's go back and forth. Before we had all of these ones, I now set it to zero and it should be many, many more zeros except for the few that are on the tips. And in this case, it should be like 16 of them. It's visually going to look the same, but let's go to like instance seven, for example. This has a thousand vertices, whereas if I didn't add this, now it looks the same, but it has 9,000 vertices. And as you expect, this grows exponentially. Actually, you can see we can already get very interesting shapes just uh, using uh, rules like that. And you can see how you can maybe make a fern or some kind of spiral or whatever. I want to, at this point, start making this look good. And the first step to that is you're going to notice on every single iteration, this fork that is spawning, 
is the exact same size, and that creates all these overlappings. In fact, if you look at a tree, you have your trunk, which is the biggest. It splits into two big branches, but then every time it splits, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller, uh, which we haven't reflected uh, here. Uh, we can actually modify that by changing the scale of our instancing. So if I set it to one, it's the same thing. If I make it 0.5, um, it's going to actually make something that looks kind of like a dandelion. It's going to be the same size. Yes, it is smaller, but it's the same size. I want to control this more kind of dynamically. So let's actually make this a input. So if we go back to our exposed node group, now this is something I can control. By the way, probably a good idea to save. But while we do have the scaling and it is nice, I don't necessarily want this to be the same number on every single iteration. In fact, for my trees, like I said, it should be getting smaller uh, every single time. Let's have this uh, number dependent on the iteration count. Super simple way to do this is I want to actually have which iteration we are. That number should be exposed. So I'm going to take this and make a new kind of uh, a variable is what we call it, a new variable that we're tracking. I'm going to add one. The reason for this is if I connect it now, but this attribute, this variable, this whatever, it starts at zero. We then add one to it. So it's equal to one. It then goes back to the beginning. We add one again, it's two, it's three, it's four. If I want it to get smaller by two each time, so each time it halves, uh, we could have that be kind of a scaling of one, then a half, then a fourth. Basically, it's uh, 0.5 to the power of something. We can literally write that. So it's going to be 0.5 to the power of this variable. So when this is equal to zero, we have 0.5 to the power of zero, which happens to be one, then 0.5 to the power of one which is 0.5, then 0.25, then 0.125, et cetera. I connect this here, and now you can see we have very different behavior. It's like it keeps branching, but it gets finer and finer and finer. 0.5 is nice, but it doesn't have to be that. In fact, the smaller it is, kind of the faster this shrinks. But on the other hand, if I bring it closer to one, we get our tree but with less overlapping. Now the secret, by the way, to getting a nice tree, and you can see we're kind of making broccoli, <laughs> which is the point. Uh, the secret to getting a nice tree is picking a nice L diagram. So you see, if I do something like this, I kind of get half of a leaf shape, it turns out. Because this is fully dynamic at this point, we just update our L system. So I'm gonna hit extrude. It's going to do something that looks like it's iterating, but it's not actually working because it should be forking over here now with our uh, trident fork. This is because, remember, uh, we care about our selection <laughs> uh, for where we spawn this. I click assign, and now all of a sudden we get a lot more geo. So you do want to be careful with this. But I take these, I scale these together, and we get I mean, honestly, this is looking more like a leaf generator than a tree generator, but you can see where I'm going with this. In fact, I can take this bottom vertex, which is not in the selection. Again, if I select it, it's only these top three. I'm going to extrude on the Z axis by, let's say, minus one. I can then take everything and move it up by one. And what's the difference? Well, now um, this tree is exactly the same, but it has kind of a longer time before it branches like all the way, right? Um, and as I make this like trunk longer, you can see it's the same thing, right? But we've gone from like a bush to like something with a bigger trunk and kind of get all these complicated behaviors. By the way, this is how I made it blow in the wind, uh, just rotating the cell system back and forth. You might be noticing that even though, you know, let's say I make this non-symmetric, it's looking very similar again and again and again, which makes sense because it's a fractal. But even though trees do have this kind of like splitting behavior, it shouldn't be the same every single time, right? So maybe at some points it splits by this 0.6 factor, other times by like a 0.5 factor. Luckily for us, if I want to randomize it, literally just use a random value. Connect this here, and now you have a mess. <laughs> uh, the reason for this is our value should be around 0.6, but now we can go as high as one. So you bring this down, but now this random randomization kind of breaks up the uh, pattern quite a bit. Now I can change the seed and quickly get all kinds of trees. In fact, I can change the seed on a per uh, iteration level. And just like that, we get something that looks much more complicated. Before we continue and make crazier and crazier trees, I just want to show uh, what can happen if you go much denser. Okay, so here I've gone much denser, 10 iterations. Let's even go for 11 iterations. Be careful with this. This is actually going to simulate kind of a very full tree with a lot of leaves. So my point was the denser you make this, kind of the more insane it's going to be, but I'm going to reel it back in because if I want to create a more complicated uh, L system, it's going to exponentially create more geometry. So for a second here, I'm going to remove this. So now it's not part of the uh, thing. The reason for this is I want to subdivide the edge. This one should now be instant. So I'm going to click assign, but now I can create kind of like an extra branch over here that I click assign 
And now we should have very different kind of behavior. So again, this is our else system. Let's bring this down a little so we can see it. You now kind of have this extra branching that you can really control how this kind of comes out. And it turns out that the species of tree, whether it's like a maple tree or whatever, is basically dependent on what you do here. So you can actually look at a tree in real life, you know, touch some grass, and uh, that will perfectly uh, describe the thing. Of course, you can also uh, mess with this random value. Put this one over here. So this is my L system. It kind of goes left and right, left and right. And this also creates a different kind of tree. I mean, I think I'm a broken record at this point. So let's make something that looks a bit more like a willow. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to click remove, subdivide, reassign. Now look at that. Now we have like a super stylized tree. And I don't know if I achieved willow. It's given more like broccoli. Let's give it like a random branch over here. Click assign. And there we go. That seemed to be the secret to get getting a, a fuller looking tree. You need, it seems like you need more than two branches to get it to really pop. I think the only other thing I want to really emphasize here is again, this is how we calculated our rotation. If we add to this, this is how you get like bending in the tree, at least if you do this uh, subtly. In fact, uh, if you don't want it to be all the same, you just, uh, instead of putting 0.1, uh, you randomize it. So let's go from point, negative 0.4 to 0.4. Should, should I go a bit further? I should, shouldn't I? Uh, let's throw this through a sign function to have this animated over time. So we are gonna need a time parameter. Does that make sense? And then add this random number going from negative pi to pi. So let's see what this gives us. Beautiful. I'm gonna use seconds instead because it's slower. I think kind of the final thing that will make it not look crazy is you just multiply it by a kind of a small number and that will make it look more believable. Like the wind isn't going as far. And to make the wind faster, you multiply before the sign. So three will make it three times as fast. Um, I should mention, if you want to take this to three dimensions, it kind of is as simple as taking these, not exactly, but moving them into the third dimension, right? So you can see what I'm doing here. Basically, beyond this, you do also need to um, update how the rotation works. But other than that, you can kind of see how we get 3D. Everything I did here, including... Kind of some of the complicated stuff, which is like, how do you get the thickness of the tree, etc., uh, will be available on Patreon, and it will also uh, be available for a dollar and a half on Blender Market. So hopefully you enjoyed this. I know this was long, but it's so cool. It is like, uh, I feel like the last step really is just instancing leaves, but like you have so many branches. And I mean, this is how you make a winter tree uh, that doesn't have leaves, but that's it.